Hey guys, this is Chris from Mixdown.online. I hope you're doing good. Today I want to share with you some other Cubase tips that I find very useful, especially to increase uh, my workflow when I work on a mix or on a recording. Um, so first, for my first tip, very simple, it has to do with looping. Um, so basically, when you want to loop a section, you need to, um, to select the segment you want to loop. Um, so uh, if I want to select uh, bar three, for example, I can actually just bring my uh, my cursor on top right here and a small pen is going to appear and I just can just drag and there you go. I have my selection um, and if I want to activate it so it can loop, uh, I just click on top and now the, the loop is activated. So if I play that, you'll see it's going to loop. Very simple. Um, so that's one way, one simple way of doing so. I can drag the edges as well uh, and bring that to the segment I want to loop. So that's another way of doing it. So now if I want to select uh, just one segment within so within a selected segment, uh, what I need to do, you know, I can just go and uh, check the uh, select the range selection tool and select whatever part I want to I want to loop or select and click on P as in Peter. Okay, you click on the letter P on your keyboard, but first you select with the range tool the segment you want to loop, and there you go, you have that done. So this is very useful, um, and it speeds things up when you're mixing, especially you know when you're you're in a time when uh, during the mix you just need to loop that section because you know the the transition between the verse and the chorus there's something there that you need to fix. My very simple, you just click on that tool, select that part, click on P, and there you go, you're on you can uh, loop that section. So very simple. And so that's my other way of looping a segment, which is my favorite way. All right, so now for tip number two. Uh, so let's say I have those guitar tracks linked. Okay, so I'm just gonna select them and link them. And uh, let's see, there you go, guitars. When you link a few channels together, you can link all the settings as well. So like the volume, the pan, and so on. So let's link these four guitar tracks now. Uh, they're all linked together. So if I want to work on one of these linked channels, uh, what I need to do is I need to activate the suspend all channel linking. Uh, so you can just click on top here if you want to suspend these, or you can click on Alt on your uh, on your keyboard and leave your finger on Alt actually, and this will uh, suspend all linking channels. So you, you'll be able to uh, to work on uh, a single channel that is already linked, which is pretty cool. Now for tip number three, let's look at the uh, channel strip. Uh, now, if on the mix console you don't see the channel strip, click on the racks and select channel strip and you'll see it directly on the console. Uh, so these are pretty cool. There are different kind of effects that are included in Cubase that you can select and activate as needed. So uh, if I want to edit that, my favorite way of doing it is to go into the channel settings. And um, so I have access to the channel strip right there. So to activate one, uh, one plugin, just click on it. And if I select them all, they're all active on that channel. Uh, now the way Cubase is configured is you have the inserts that comes before the strip. So everything that you insert in, uh, in the inserts, all the plugins are gonna go before it hits the channel strip. So if you wanna turn that around, just click on the move channel strip to pre-insert button right here. And this way your strip channel, in this case right now, goes before uh, it hits the inserts. So again, that could be very, very useful depending on what you want to do and depending if you're using the channel strip or not. But I would suggest you to try it out. It's pretty cool. And in the channel strip, you can also move uh, the units. Um, so you don't need to keep the original order. So for example, if I want to have the de on top, I just bring it on top, that simple. If I want to do tape saturation on top, very simple. You just drag it down or up and it changes the order. So this is pretty cool. And for tip number four, uh, I'm going to stay in the channel setting uh, window. And uh, right here in the equalizer uh, section, there's the um, uh, there's a low cut and a high cut filter Okay, uh, that you can use on every channel in Cubase. 
uh, which again is useful. You don't need to add any plugins. You can actually change the slope right here by right clicking on the, uh, the low cut filter or high cut filter and just go on the filter slope option right here and select the slope that you want. Very simple. Now for tip number five, let's stay in the channel settings and go in the sends uh, option. So I'm just going to select destinations and I am going to send uh, the signal to a reverb, activate that. And now my signal is sent to the reverb. Uh, and that reverb is an stereo effects channel. Um, so basically if I click on the tab here, the panning tab, the, uh, you can pan your effects, your send signal. Um, so if you click right here on the small arrow, you can actually link the panners, okay? Which means that uh, whatever you do with your main pan, audio pan, uh, is gonna affect the send panner as well, okay? So they're both linked together. And if you don't want that option, just make sure it's not linked. Because if you keep it linked, uh, what's going to happen if you move your uh, send panner and afterwards you decide to move your audio panning, they're going to get linked again. Okay, so if you want to have them independent from each other, make sure the link panners is not selected. And now for tip number six. All right, let's talk about automation. So if you want to automate your, uh, if you want to add an automation to a track manually with your mouse, uh, basically you just activate the uh, read mode here and uh, you basically just uh, click whatever you want. Let's, let's say I want to I uh, increase the volume right here uh, in this uh, section here. So what I need to do, I just need to, uh, draw some uh, some automation points and I just select them and bring them up and down so that's a way of doing it that's the manual way of doing it in my opinion it's a bit slower to do it this way uh, what I love to do though is to select the line tool if you don't see the line tool uh, make sure it's selected in this uh, this uh, option right here okay so click select the line tool and you can actually just select the section you want to increase or decrease and there you go very simple and very fast and it's going to create all automation points um, automatically so or you can basically just draw uh, draw your automation points basically okay that's another way of doing it but the uh the line tool i just, I just like it because you know most of the time when i when i want to just increase the vocals or the guitar on only one part or a few bars that just select these bars and there you go it's done all right guys so this is it for today i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions leave them below or any comments for that matter you can leave them right here on youtube and on my website at mixdown.online if you want to reach me via email and don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel if you're not already and if you're not on my mailing list go on my website at mixdown.online and get on the mailing list you'll have access to a lot of stuff in the mixdown zone and there's some new stuff coming up too as well that is going to be free for you to use. Until next time, see you.